Welcome to Notkill Racing Circuit for the Classic Sports Cars Club first ever visit north of the border to this racetrack in Fife. Coming up now we have race number one for the Kartec Motorsport Modern Classics and the Advantage Motorsport Future Classics. As the drivers got away in pretty decent conditions here at Notkill Racing Circuit a big grid of Future Classics and Modern Classics Finding their way around Knockhill Racing Circuit for what effectively for some of these drivers is the first time they maybe have raced north of the border. Now a racetrack in Scotland here in Fife. Knockhill is an international race circuit and it's host of the British Touring Car Championship amongst other big name events. Unfortunately though, Robin Benn had a DNF. Thankfully wrecked the cell against the tyre banking there would have saved huge damage. And unfortunately that could be a little bit worse for wear. Class A70, Willie Toy, a man who we know very well in Scotland. Willie, unfortunately, in the TR8 was a DNF. And we have seen Willie Toy give us some fabulous, fabulous racing around Knock Hill Racing Circuit over the years. He wasn't the only one. There was blow-ups left, right and centre. Out of Clarks, we lost the little Lotus Elise, unfortunately. And there was no way coming back for Suzanne Williams, that's for sure. The morning Gendy Porsche in the B80 was first in class. Car number 47, Ryan Moan and Sammy Gendy. The Porsche 944 S2, the 2.9 litre car. And it was David Sharp first in class in MD. Look at the lovely little Lotus Elise. We do like that. That one thankfully did keep on going. Through the world famous Black Circle she came. And we see a spin in the distance. That's one of our TVR Tuscans getting it all wrong coming out of McIntyre's turn three. And then you try and get to Butcher's and there's just no place for you to go. Class A80, car number 111. That was the Kennedy car and well, double Kennedy, Jason and Louise Kennedy. Big car for Knockhill, isn't it? The Nissan Skyline GTR R32 2.6 litre first in class for them. And Hammersley and Brown, class C80 in period colours with period number we'd like to say harking to John Cleland, John Hammersley and Adam Brown winners of their class look at that that was almost a manoeuvre up the inside from Dave Griffin and his lovely BMW in MB class Dave Griffin in the M3 E36 just listen yeah that's the sound that we like from a BMW beautiful sound class ME and overall winner was the big TVR Tuscan it was Matt Holborn the beautiful Gulf esque livery, I've got to say, and I remember when the TVR Tuscan was a national championship and they were mighty fast. And Matt showing the car has lost none of its skill and it's just as fast. Race number two now sees the Liquid Molly New Millennium. The Motorsport School Turbo Tin Tops and the Viram Builders Open Series. The red lights were on once again and it's a hometown hero Stuart Robb who gets the jump off the front row of the grid in his TVR Tuscan. And Stuart Robb powered away from the front. A busy, busy field of varying cars, engine sizes and overall sizes around Knock Hill. But right at the very back, the cute little smart cars. I've not seen them for quite some time. And it's David Nash there in car 777, first in class of the smart cars. And he was ahead of Alistair Woodhead. The smart car, so small compared to some of these other cars on track. David and Alistair really throwing these cars around. Ooh, a little bit of contact here at the hairpin, unfortunately. That was Dylan Popovich just into the back of Griffin's BMW. And that was a little bit of damage we didn't really need. Last TC, number 100, Melvin Cockerton and John Cockerton. The beautiful little Mini Cooper S as well. Love that. Love the whine of a supercharger from a Mini. Number 72 was Carl Chambers, first in class for TD. And that car, it almost has a livery. It doesn't quite show up on the television. The brightness of that car, stunning. Carl, you've done a great job of that car. Well done. Into the gravel trap goes the Mini, the Cockerton Mini at McIntyre's. An easy thing to do that. 
as you saw Dylan Popovich with that little bit of contact to hip him, but not really showing any damage. He was first in class for the NE. Number nine, Dylan Popovich accelerates from the hairpin up towards the flag. Bouncing his way through Clark Corner. Last OC box, Dave Griffin. We've seen him already, and he was first in class in this. And really, we just cannot get enough of the sound of that. The sponsor's quite handy on the side as well on a hot summer's day in Scotland. And as he made their way up the back straight, a few pit stops were happening in the pit lane. As we can see, Chris and Harry Pesh there just doing a little change of the, the Janetta G50. And all driving on the grass at the fastest point on Oak Hill is really not the thing you want to be doing. At the back of Clark's, well, that's why we line our circuit with Wreck to Sell. The safety car did come out. Wreck the sale, cushions all impact. And thankfully, that car gets towed away with very, very little damage to it. Maybe a wing mirror popped in, but extremely lucky. Stuart Robb powers up towards the green flag, and he was tailed by David Nash in the smart car, but he was the overall winner. He took the class and overall win. Stuart Robb, number 71, one of our Super Lap Scotland contenders. Great to see Big Stu, as he's known, in the paddock drive that Tuscan up towards the checkered flag. Now it's time for the Adams and Page Swinging 60s Group Number 2 and the Classic Key. As the green lights went out, we were still under good conditions here at Nokia Racing Circuit as the grid marshals just make sure everybody gets off the line in the Adams and Page Swinging 60s Group 2 and the Mintex Classics Key. As they come already downed off his dip here, a nice bit of mixture of cars. I do like Donald Laird there with the little Lotus Elan. Tara McWhorter out there as well. And a few other cars which you need to keep an eye on. Brian Cowan in the Lotus Alan S1 as well. Everybody giving everybody just that nice little bit of respect for racing room that we see in the oh dear classic sports car club. Now that's not what you want to be doing at Clark Corner. It is very easy to do. But into the gravel trap. Well, yeah, that was one of the little lands, if I'm not mistaken. And that needs a safety car. So out comes the Knockhill safety car, the Honda Civic Type R, which you can drive around Knockhill Racing Circuit for any of the experiences that they have here. But going through there is Steve Chapman, Class CC for Steve. Car number 115, first in class. And well, Steve, uh, he was trying to maybe make it a little bit different for himself, Steve Chapman. Bounces back on the track at the exit of Clark Corner. It's an easy thing to do, that blind right-hander over the top of the hill. David Smitherum is a man that can tell you all about Clark Corner. In Class CD, it was Joe Ward, first in class, car number 61. Joe in the little TVR, he'll be delighted with that one. An 1840 engine inside that car. And it just wouldn't be classics without an MG, would it? Class CM, Paul Raymond and James Wheeler. The MGB Roadster sideways through Leslie's in towards McIntyre's, almost echoing a Scandinavian flick there. 10 out of 10, boys. Class C8, well, that was Richard Bateman, car number 50. He took honours in that one, the little Lotus Elan, into the hairpin, rather an unorthodox line on the way in, but manages to keep the speed through the corner and accelerate up towards the finish line. Class L, Donald Laird and Kieran Bailey. Donald, who we know very well at Nokia Racing Circuit, and Kieran Bailey, a former classic and... Well, Kieran's raced quite a lot, so he does know his way around Knock Hill. We'll leave it at that. But those guys took honours in that one. And there's Darren McWhorter with the, yeah, the big extended roll hoop that he's got. Car number 80, the Invitational class, I think, with Darren McWhorter in the Jagger XK120. 3.8 litre. And McWhorter, look at him slide that thing out of the hairpin as he goes up towards the finish line. Class G, an overall winner, was Mark Campbell. Mark Campbell, car number 15, a Triumph TR5, a 2.6 litre engine in this car. And I didn't want to talk over that. Sounds beautiful as it heads up and takes the overall win and the class win. It's now time for some action from the Coord Sport Tin Tops and the Mr. Tyre Puma Cup. Right 
As the red lights went out, you could see the weather was starting to have a bit of a happening, shall we see, here in Scotland. The mist was starting to form in the top of the hill, and we were three wide into the first corner. Ford Sport Tin Tops and Mr. Tire Motorsport Puma Cup gave us nothing but action all the way through qualifying and all the races. So it started to string out through the midpoint of the race, so things started to happen. Cars facing the wrong way at the hip, and you can see there's a few spots of rain on our camera there as well. So that was something that caught Terry Upton out at the hairpin. Andrew Barron, first in class for Class G, car number 88. A little Ford KA. Finding his way around Knock Hill, probably a perfect car for Knock Hill in the wet conditions. It's like a mini, but it's a futuristic mini, if you know what I mean. Got a wheel in each corner. The Puma Cup, Jonathan Glover and Emily Glanville. First in class, car number 196. John Glover and Emily Glanville both know their way around Knock Hill very well, especially Emily, who used to instruct at Knock Hill. Side by side action down Duffus Dip, which is fantastic. And both drivers keep it nice and clean. Don't thankfully exchange any paint whatsoever. That was James Slater and Richard Harmon there in the Honda Civic. Class C was won by Steve Papworth, first in class. Car number 14, as you see in towards the hairpin, the move happening. Taking C-class honours, Steve Papworth, Fiesta ST, happy with that one, no doubt. Using all of the exit care, but Clarks was Sean Ely, first in class, in class F, and he's obviously got to grips with the circuit in car number 22, the Peugeot 205 GTI, the 1580 engine in that car, and that's exactly how you want to take Clarks. That is not how you want to take McIntyre's, which is turn three, tricky right-hander, which disappearing into a dust cloud, we've got no idea who that was. Remember side-by-side -side at Duffus? Well, the class A winners was James Slater and Richard Harmon. The Honda Civic Type R, a perfect car for around Knock Hill, perfect weight, perfect power, and these two guys drove it extremely well. Martin Addison, E-Class winner, first in class, and Martin in the little Peugeot 106 GTI, well he comes from good stock. His dad has raced with the DDMC for quite a lot of years, both drivers race winners. Using the gravel trap and a little bit more to try and get some drive out of Knock Hill's hairpin, isn't really the best thing, but Class B, an overall winner. Car number 15 was Russell Thompson as the rain started to fall. He had great style, amazing car control, and as he took it up towards the line, Russell Thompson in his Renault Clio Cup car, the two-liter, took the checkered flag in deteriorating weather conditions. If you enjoyed the Swinging 60s group number two, it's now time for the Adams and Page Swinging 60s group number one. Look at the conditions now as the lights go out on the Beatsons Building Supply Bridge. It's raining at Knock Hill Racing Circuit as at the Adams and Page Swinging 60s group number one make their way onto circuit and tippy toe their way around as they should do. The conditions they had this morning were lovely. Now arrive at Knock Hill in very powerful cars and wet tarmac. Class T, the Brooks car, first in class. They'll be delighted with how things went for them. Tricky, tricky weather conditions to try and try and put all that power down onto the ground. Paul Gregory was first in class in Class E. Paul Gregory in the MGB Roadster, sorry. Sliding his way through McIntyre's and using the gravel as a bit of a berm there. But it just didn't work out for Richard Merrill in the Alfa Romeo Giulia GT. And he's still fighting that one all the way down through Butchers on his way towards the chicane. A long accident that was. Class D, Richard Rowlands and Alan Hassel in the Ford Cortina Mark 1 GT. Finding, shall we say, the extra limits of Knock Hill. But he wasn't the only one, or they weren't the only ones. In Class C. Anthony, Hunt, Anthony Hunting and Joseph Ritchie, the Morris Mini Cooper. It's just not classic racing if you don't have a Mini. And there's two of them together on track, heading round towards the hairpin. But there were spins and action aplenty as everybody tried to get themselves dialed into a wet knock hill racing circuit after testing in the dry. Local man in Class F, Class S, was David Robb. First in class for David Robb, a man who has competed in SLS with us, but now turns his attention towards the Classic Sports Car Club. 
and this man, Class B and overall winner, Simon Benoit. That Hillman Imp gets driven within an inch of its life every time Simon steps himself into that car and tightens those seatbelts. Simon was demonstrating just how much car control he has as he took the class and overall win. Let's now go and catch up with the Gold Arts Magnificent Sevens. The Gold Arts Magnificent Sevens got their race underway, and yeah, just what you don't want in an open top race car rain, spray, not much wind either, that's the problem. Nothing to clear the track and nothing to dry it out either. As the guys got themselves on track and up to speed, trying to avoid all the rivers. Class G winner, well, disqualified actually, was Colin Watson as he come in towards him. And look at the water forming on the inside as he splashes through some of the knockhill puddles. All these drivers are demonstrating, again, some great car control. Class B winner, car number 72, Ian Hare and Andrew Greenwood in the Caterham Supersport, the 1600cc engine in that car. Into the gravel trap at the hairpin, easily done, let me tell you that, I've been there myself. Car number 158, Douglas Hanna and Brendan Dudley, the Pro Comp LA Gold car. We did manage to get out of there, but unfortunately it was on the help of a tow rope. In Class H, it was Ray Arms and Stephen Storey in their Caterham Blackwood. Ray Arms, former touring car driver, Class D was Jeremy Adams. He was the winner of Class D and Jeremy demonstrated some great car control and conditions in the 420 that you just do not want to be in. In Class E, it was William Redman. First in class, car number 241, another Caterham 420R. Huge power out of those cars, extremely light. And you really have to dance and tickle that throttle pedal. Class F, Carl Exton and John Byrne in the Caterham 7, 2.3 litre Caterham 7. Just feathering in the throttle all the way round towards the hairpin. And the overall winner and class winner was David Watson, car number 85 in his Spire RB7. A beautiful, beautiful little car when you get up close to them. The Spire, nice low centre of gravity, but it makes you a little bit closer to that wet tarmac. Dave Watson, car 85, took the victory.